Hello and welcome to another tutorial from the Golden Ribbon. Today we're going to be looking at the location icon tutorial. I have my colors on my right hand side and the location icon as a pattern conveniently in the middle. 1700 by 1700 canvas. We're going to start with, an, with the ellipse tool and we're going to hold control and shift and we're going to pull out with our left mouse button. Since we have the marker here I'm just going to use it to help me out. Then I'm going to duplicate with Control and D, or you can go to Edit and Duplicate. And I'm going to hold Control and Shift again and scale down. So you have two circles here. Good. Next, I'm going to go to the Bezier tool. You can also activate it with B. And I'm just going to click about here. And we're going to draw a triangle. and connect it about here and we get ourselves a triangle it doesn't have to be a straight triangle but this should be okay and then we're going to select this and the bigger circle that's the triangle we just made and we're going to go to path and union good so now we have our general location shape then we're going to hold current hold shift once more select that circle that we created earlier and we're going to go path and difference so now we have the location marker next we're going to go to our rectangle tool and we're going to draw a rectangle well, duh. <laughs> and with the rectangle this is about good we're going to place it underneath the the location marker may be a bit hard to see because of the opacity. Let me just increase the opacity of each one. And I'm going to put this location marker in red just for convenience. We'll adjust the colors of it later on. But then we're going to change this to a path because presently it can be edited by the rectangle tool and we don't want that. We want it to be a path. So it's going to go to path, object to path. Or you can hit Control, Shift and C. Then we're going to duplicate, we're going to double click it, activate our nodes tool, and we're going to highlight these two. You want to make sure that when you highlight these two, this is selected. That's show transformational handles the selected nodes. I have mine activated already, but you may need to activate yours as it doesn't come on default. Good, and then we're just going to scale this in holding control and shift. Similar to how you would do the circle earlier and we just lift this up a little bit and I think this is good next we're going to select these two again and we're going to go to insert new nose insert into selected segments in our tools control box area you're going to hit that twice then we're going to click off click the rectangle again which is now a parallelogram and we're going to select the two the bottom two nodes and we're going to repeat the process good Next, we're going to select these nodes right here. That's every other node on both the top and bottom. I'm going to hold Control, and we're just going to drag one of them and pull up until we get a shape that looks like a folded map. And you can adjust this the way you want to until you get a shape that you're most comfortable with. I'm going to work with this. And you can pretty much just drag it in and pull it up and do all sorts of things until you're comfortable with what you have. Okay. For the next one, next piece, bit of, um, for the next step, we are going to activate our Bezier tool. Go to the top to this vertice that we pulled up and we're going to drag a line down to cut the other vertice that is parallel to it and we're going to do the same for this vertice up here it's covered by the location marker but we're just going to hold control and pull up because we know that this is going to be a straight line so it will cut the other vertice so long as we're accurate with this one and for this one here we're just going to duplicate it pull it over, could duplicate with Control and D, and then we're going to flip this horizontally. 
and zoom in with our middle mouse button just to see that we get it accurately there then we're going to hold shift and select all three we're going to go to path and union Good. then now that we have all three selected excuse me our three selected we're going to select this and the map underneath and we're going to go to path and division uh, and if you're struggling with boolean modes i highly suggest the last the sec the last tutorial i think it's the last one or the second to last tutorial on boolean modes um that pretty much clears it up as as it comes to this okay so what we're going to do is going to select all of these these segments that we did and we're going to duplicate it i'm going to go on path and unify it uh, we should have just duplicated it a third time but that's okay we can just unify it because we're going to need another duplicate and we're going to you activate our dropper tool and get dropper down here i'm going to hold shift uh, i'm going to hold shift and select in fact we don't need the dropper tool right now but we can hold shift and select the white and then we're going to activate our filler stroke dialog box if you don't have it up then you can go to objects filler stroke in your file menu and then we're going to go to stroke style and we're going to reduce the stroke width to 10. Oh, in fact let's have it to 20. 20. Good and then we're just going to click off and we want to remove the fill from this so we can come up to the up here and we're going to remove the fill make sure it's selected and remove the fill good then we're going to pull this down and we're going to move into now we're going to move into now coloring this these strips right here so we're going to select every second one and I'm just going to put in this color here and then we're just going to activate our gradient tool you can do that by going g or pressing create and edit gradients and we're going to pull down and with the lower node we're going to select the red and then we're going to pull down also again and we're going to select the red sorry about the noisy fan i think it needs to be cleaned if you're hearing it okay so now that we have it pulled down we're going to add to the map and i'm going to activate the bezier tool and you can find the bezier tool here and we're just going to draw a zigzag line to follow the contours of the map and then we're going to go to our stroke style with the fill and stroke dialog box and we're going to put this to 15 and then we're going to hold press d or go to the dropper tool hold shift Oh, I don't hold shift for this L again. <laughs> and then it's going to come down here and hold shift and select the white. I'm going to create one more line. Just a bit of variety. And we're going to put this to 15 again. And we're going to hold shift and select this white. Let's bring this down slightly. Just to add some variation to the map okay for the next step we're going to create the circle down here so where it's going to actually touch the map so we have the circle right here good next we're going to just duplicate this section here and we are going to just pull up pull up the circle just a little bit and we're going to select these two and go to path and union Oh, so path and intersection. My, my, my bad. And oh, it looks like this has a stroke. No. Oh, this is the one with the stroke. My apology. Path and intersection. Good. And next, we're just going to skew it slightly. So you can activate the skew by clicking one more time in a circle. And you'll see the rotation on skew rot um, handles and we're going to push it up then we're going to duplicate with ctrl and d or edit and duplicate and we're going to flip it on the left hand side and then we're just going to place it underneath our 
location handle. Next, we're going to activate the dropper tool. In fact, next we're going to, yeah, activate the dropper tool. And we're going to select this. Actually, you don't even have to use the dropper tool. We can just bring a gray down here. I'm going to select a deeper gray. And that should give us this effect right here, looking that the circles actually bend with the map. Okay, for the next part, and for the final part, we're going to duplicate this location marker. And then we're going to go to path and inset. And we're going to do that three times. Good. Next, I'm going to select. I'm going to select the one behind it, and I'm going to select this darker gray here. Then I'm going to create a circle. The circle at the ellipse tool. I'm going to come here and just scale it up. And then I'm going to select this circle, making sure the circle is above the inset shape that we just made. And we're going to go to path and difference. Good. And then we can use our gradient tool. In fact, let's um, bring it out a bit more. Path and difference. Then we're going to use our gradient tool. That's better. And we can select this and drag down. And lastly, we're just going to grab this, duplicate this white border that we've just done. Make sure it's duplicated. Control and D. I'm going to drag it down. We're going to fill it, remove the stroke, and we're going to put it underneath our layers right here. Then we're just going to pull these up, these corners right here, holding control and pulling it up. And we're going to give this a gray. And to our fill and stroke, we're just going to reduce the opacity right here. So it looks like a shadow. In fact, for last, we can even pull this up. I've got two nodes there, let's pull it up. Good. And you can adjust the opacity down a bit. And there we have our location icon tutorial. If you like this tutorial, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more like this tutorial, then you can leave a message in the blog post. I would appreciate that. Head over to the blog written blog post to see how this was done. But until we see, see each other again, get up and design a new dome. Later.